In this video, we present our work on recognition of offline handwritten Urdu text. My name is Nazar Khan and this work has been co-authored with Tayyiba Anju. We are from the Computer Vision and Machine Learning Group at Punjab University College of Information Technology in Pakistan. Let us begin by describing the offline handwritten text recognition problem for the Urdu language. Offline handwritten text recognition refers to the problem of recognizing handwritten text from an image. We solve this problem for the Urdu language, which is written from right to left in a mixture of mostly cursive, but occasionally non-cursive form. Recognition of Urdu is difficult due to the well-known Sire's paradox, that a cursively written word cannot be recognized without being segmented and cannot be segmented without being recognized. In addition, handwritten text can employ a wide variety of pen types, writing styles, sizes, and page backgrounds. But most importantly, in handwritten Urdu, almost every rule can be violated until the text becomes illegible. Here we see handwritten Urdu text in the first row, the corresponding typed text in the second row, and the individual characters in the third row. It can be seen that within cursively written Urdu words, the individual characters appear with widely varying ligatures. While typed Urdu conforms to some rules, handwriting can be restricted to very few rules. What are some of the main challenges in handwritten Urdu? One challenge is that cursive Urdu can have extreme overlap among characters. Sometimes parts of a let letter can overlap multiple other letters or even other words. In some cases, letters can lie exactly on top of other letters. Another challenge is context dependent shape and location of letters. Placement of characters is not just in right to left order. There is a slight two dimensional structure to Urdu as well. A third challenge is that Urdu is not entirely cursive. It is a mix of cursive and non-cursive. As a result, sometimes the space within a word can be larger than the space between words. This makes tokenization of a sentence into words difficult. Therefore, handwritten Urdu recognition is not a trivial problem. However, Urdu script is related to Arabic and Farsi. So let us take a look at prior work done for these Arabic-like scripts. Previous attempts have either used raw pixels or CNN features that are then decoded using a recurrent model such as an LSTM. The horizontal nature of text is captured via bi-directional LSTMs and multi-dimensional LSTMs. They have also been employed to capture the two-dimensional features of Arabic-like scripts. The concept of attention has not been explored properly. Error reporting has been restricted to the level of characters. Word level accuracy is not reported, which we speculate is due to the character level accuracy not being good enough for recognition of words, since a word is recognized correctly if and only if each and every character is recognized correctly. Let us also take a look at some offline handwritten text datasets for Arabic-like scripts. Since recognition of handwritten Urdu text is not a very old problem, there are only three significant datasets dating from 2012 to 2019. However, these datasets are not entirely accessible. Datasets for handwritten Arabic are more accessible, but cannot be used to train a complete Urdu recognizer. In this work, we present the first attention-based encoder-decoder model for recognition of offline handwritten Urdu text. We present a new dataset of offline handwritten Urdu text containing more than 7,000 unique text lines uh, with ground truth. For the first time, we report word level accuracy instead of only character level accuracy. We show that attention can enable unidirectional decoders to outperform bidirectional decoders. Compared to previous approaches, we report close to two times accuracy improvement at character level and 37 times improvement at word level. Let us now discuss our attention-based method for offline Urdu handwritten text recognition. We use an encoder-decoder framework. An image containing handwritten text is passed as input into a dense net encoder. Extracted features or encodings are passed through a gated recurrent unit that attends to specific image regions in order to produce probabilities of output characters at every time step. 
These probabilities are finally decoded into output characters using beam search. Our encoder is made up of three dense blocks at different scales. Each dense block employs bottlenecks, that is one by one convolutions, to limit the number of connections. The most important part is the output, which is a volume of size h by w by d. The dense net can be replaced by any convolutional network that produces a similar output volume. Let us now see how we can interpret this volume. The output volume of size h by w by d represents d-dimensional encodings, also known as annotation vectors, of h into w overlapping blocks of the input image. The correspondence between the annotation vectors and image regions is because convolution represents moving, overlapping, and localized dot products, and pooling results in effectively larger receptive fields. Therefore, each depth vector in the output volume corresponds to a d-dimensional encoding of some localized image region. Now we can choose to focus on particular image regions during the decoding phase. One of the standard decoders for sequential data is the gated recurrent unit that produces a text sequence one character at a time, conditioned on the previously generated character y t minus one and the current hidden state h t. The attention mechanism can be incorporated in a GRU through something called a context vector. The context vector is a dynamic representation of the relevant part of the image at time t. It can be computed as an expectation or weighted sum of the annotation vectors where the attention weights alpha t i determine the importance of each image region at time t. They determine the image context in which the decision for output character at time t will be made. The attention weights alpha ti can be computed as probability values by taking a softmax over all locations. The softmax exponent for a location depends on the hidden state and that location's content encoded in the annotation vector. Ideally, we would like our text recognizer to read like we do. That is, it should focus on the relevant image region when recognizing each character or word. However, for images containing text, a character or word can appear at multiple locations. As can be seen in the second image, the highlighted boxes contain the same character at three locations. Nothing stops an attention model from re-attending a previously attended location, or from giving the right answer by attending the wrong location. Therefore, for text, the decision for attention needs to depend on the history of attention. In simpler words, where to focus next, next depends on where you have focused previously. In our model, attention at time t is made to depend on previous values of attention. That is, this is achieved through a coverage vector that represents a history of attention already given to each location. We compute coverage in two steps. First, we compute the sum of attentions over time for each region. Each sum represents a history of attention values. Then we exploit smoothness of attention by convolving with square convolution filters to extract multiple different features of the attention sums. Just like the annotation vectors that describe the input image in a static fashion, we obtain a volume of per region coverage vectors that describe the attention given so far to different regions in a dynamic fashion. So in summary, attention for region i as computed in our model depends on the hidden state, the static description of region i, and the dynamic description of the attention already given to region i. At any time instance t, the vector of output character probabilities is made to depend on the previous output character the hidden state, and the context vector. Which image region to focus on and the description of that region are encoded in the context vector. The sequence of probability vectors is converted into an optimal sequence of output characters via beam search, whereby only the k most probable branches are pursued at each time step. We also introduce a new data set 
consisting of more than 7,000 handwritten Urdu text lines containing close to 79,000 words written by 100 different writers. The dataset contains 98 unique characters, 100 undergraduate students between the age bracket of 20 to 24 years were asked to submit any handwritten Urdu text along with a corresponding ground truth text file. There was no restriction whatsoever on pen type, page type, and ink color. There was no restriction on what to write as well. Participants were free to select anything to write in Urdu. Pages were scanned at 200 dots per inch and text lines were manually segmented. We did not perform any de-skewing on text line images. Finally, the submitted ground truth was thoroughly checked and then corrected or completed as required by a team of three persons. Here's a comparison of our dataset with three existing datasets for handwritten Urdu. There are two problems with existing datasets. The first problem is that sometimes data statistics are not reported correctly. For instance, while the UCOM UNHD dataset claims to have 10,000 text lines, only 700 of those lines are unique in terms of semantic content. The second problem is that all three datasets are either publicly unavailable or only partially available. Our dataset is available in full at the given link. Let us now describe the training procedure and view some results. The encoder-decoder model was trained jointly to maximize the probability of ground truth character sequences by minimizing multi-class cross-entropy loss. Optimal output character sequence was transcribed using beam search with beam width 10. Batch normalization and dropout were used to reduce overfitting, and a delta optimization was used with gradient clipping, and model and hyperparameter details can be found in the paper. Now let's move to some results. Here is a text line recognition result that demonstrates that our model implicitly segments and recognizes a character by focusing only on localized, relevant areas. The purple region indicates the region of attention. The recognized character is shown in black on the right. The second character, the third character, the fourth character, the fifth character, the sixth character, space between words, and some other results. These results also demonstrate that our model has learned to focus in context. For example, when recognizing a sequence of characters, it focuses on relevant regions moving from right to left. That is, it has automatically learned the right to left nature of Urdu. Here are more results. All characters were recognized correctly in this instance. For quantitative evaluation, we use the standard definition of character error rate and report character level accuracy as well as word level accuracy. We compare our model with CNN encoder based unidirectional as well as bidirectional decoders that do not use attention. The CNN architecture that we use has previously been used for handwritten Urdu, Arabic, English, and French. In our experiments, bidirectional decoders were able to improve character level accuracies by less than 2%. Since character level accuracies were so low, word level accuracies are understandably poor. This is why previous work on handwritten Arabic-like scripts does not report word level accuracies. In contrast, our dense net encoder, jointly trained with an attention-based decoder, almost doubles the character level accuracy, and there is a 37 times improvement in word level accuracy. We believe the reasons for such drastic improvement in results are that the DenseNet encoder learns more diverse features compared to the CNN model of previous approaches. Secondly, attention reduces the need for bidirectional and multi-directional decoding. Thirdly, the concept of coverage captures the right to left nature of Urdu. To conclude, we have proposed an encoder-decoder framework for the recognition of offline handwritten Urdu text. We have shown that using attention in context learns the right to left nature of Urdu. We show close to two times improvement in character level accuracy, around 37 times improvement in word level accuracy. We introduce a new publicly accessible dataset of more than 7,000 text lines, consisting of around 79,000 words written by 100 writers, available at the link shown. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you for your attention.